Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. At Advertise, alhamdulillah, the topic today is Fiqhu Ramadan, the Fiqh of Ramadan. And this particular topic, I believe, not because I'm giving a lecture, should have been the first in the series of lectures for this Ramadan series. In fact, this particular topic, the Fiqh of Ramadan, should have preceded even before the Ramadan. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he ordered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the greatest of all affairs, and what is the greatest of all affairs? at tawheed la ilaha illallah. And with the greatest of all actions, al-istighfar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preceded with what? With knowledge. Allah ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fa'alam, know, أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness for your sins and the sins of the believing men and the believing women. And based on this ayah, Imam Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala made a whole chapter in Sahih al-Bukhari called Bab al-Ilm Qabl al-Qawl wal-Amal. The chapter of knowledge precedes every statement and every action. Because we know to siha, the condition for our actions to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are two. First, an ikhlas, that we do that act sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's the second thing? Al-mutaba'a. That is in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah. Which therefore means what? We have to have knowledge. Which is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man bihi khayran, fi deen. Whoever Allah wants good for, it gives him fiqh, understanding of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So fiqh Ramadan is very, very, very important. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any mistake that we have made due to the lack of understanding or knowledge, and ya'fu, for Allah ta'ala to pardon. For huwa afu wa yuhibbu al-afwa. Allah is a pardon, loves to pardon. And whatever remains of Ramadan, we fast with fiqh, with understanding, and with knowledge. Because the rewards attached to this month of Ramadan, subhanallah, the innumerable rewards, unmeasurable rewards, such as the reward which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the hadith Qudsi, as wa anna ajzi bihi. There's no act of ibadah, act of worship, like this act of worship we're doing this month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kullu amal ibn Adam lahu. Every action of the son of Adam is for you, for him. وَلَهُ الْحَسَنَ وَالْحَسَنَ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا إِلَى سِبْعِمِيَ ضِعْفَ And for every deed he does, he has ten rewards. From ten all the way to what? Seven hundred. So your salah, your hajj, your zakah, your sadaqah, everything you do, the reward could be from ten to seven hundred. But this act of worship we do in Ramadan, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Illa sawm, subhanallah. Except for fasting. Fa inna huli wa ana ajzi bihi. Fasting is for me, Allah. I'm the only one that could reward for fasting. This great reward could not be attained except we fulfill the condition of mutaba'ah. Fasting with knowledge and understanding according to Quran and Sunnah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sawm Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. We will fast the month of Ramadan out of Iman and hoping for the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All these previous sins will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to do so how? With sincerity and what else? Mutaba'a. According to the Quran and Sunnah. So we want to look at the fiqh of Ramadan. It's very difficult in one sitting and one gathering to co cover all the fiqh concerning Ramadan. But we're going to cover those issues attached to the rewards of Ramadan, such as fasting. At-Tarawih wa Laylatul Qadr. So we're going to begin bi Ibnillah Ta'ala with a song, the ahkam, the rules and regulations concerning a song. And in fiqh, when you study in fiqh, the first thing we always begin with, when we, when we start anything in fiqh, in any chapter, is to define that thing, the definition of that thing. And these definitions bi Ibnillah Ta'ala, for the Arabs and the non-Arabs, if we pay attention to them, we make an effort, they're very easy to memorize. So anything in Islam, there's a linguistic definition and a scientific definition. So what is a psalm? A psalm, lughatan and imsak. Psalm, 
linguistically means to abstain or to forbid yourself from doing something. And this linguistic meaning we'll find in the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the tongue of Maryam, the mother of Isa. When she said, Inni nadartu li rahmani sawma. I've dedicated a psalm to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fala ukallima liyawm in siya. I'm not going to speak to any human being. Meaning she's abstained from what? Speaking. So psalm linguistically means to abstain or withhold from something. A psalm, according to the sharia, is a ta'abud lillah. Is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bi imsaq min al mufattirat. But abstaining for the things that break the fast. Min tulu'il fajr ila ghurub shams. From dawn to sunset. A ta'abud. Worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But abstaining from the things mufattirat. The things that break the fast. So we're going to stop on this definition and going to the ahkam of song. What are the things that break the fast? This is the first we're going to begin with, inshallah ta'ala. Because at the end of this, inshallah ta'ala, there'll be quizzes. You're going to ask questions regarding these things. So I hope, Ya Ammar and the rest of you, you're paying attention, inshallah ta'ala. al mufattirat they're very easy to remember. There's three things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran that breaks the fast. In all the eight, there's three which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. And the other things from the other eight, they're also connected to these three things, as we shall see. The first three things are al akl wa shurb wa jima. This is mentioned in the Quran. Eating, drinking, and sexual intercourse. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَالْآنَ بَاشِرُوهُنْ وَابْتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْتُ الْأَبْيَضِ مِنَ الْخَيْتِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجَرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, As for now, go to your family, your wives. Have intercourse with them. So this is a jima' intercourse. Wakulu, eat, washrabu, and drink until the white thread of the dawn becomes distinct from the black thread of the night. Thumma atimmu siyam ila layl. And then complete the fast till a lay, till the night time. So these are the three. What's number four? Number four from the things that break the fast is al ibr injection which is connected to food when a person takes an injection that has nutrients in it nutrients that give or replace food and drink such as insulin this also what it breaks the fast the fifth thing that breaks the fast is menstrual cycle for the women or postnatal bleeding so if a woman she has postnatal bleeding Minutes just before the iftar, just minutes before the iftar, the song for that day, null and void. And likewise, if she has a cycle, menstrual cycle, postnatal bleeding, minutes after the iftar, the fasting for that day is correct. So, how many are on so far? Yeah, Musab. Five? Five? You sure? Okay. The next thing. That breaks the fast. From the things that breaks the fast is al hujama blood copying. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith, "After al hajim wal mahjum," that the one who does the blood copying, the one that does the blood copying, and the one the blood copying copying is done on, their fast is broken. Why is it the one that does the blood copying copying that takes blood from somebody? Why is his fast broken? Because in the olden days, if you go to some part of Africa, they still do it like this. When you're doing blood copying, they use the mouth. Yes? They take out the blood copying with the, the mouth. They suck it out. So there's a strong possibility that a small part of the blood could go into the mouth. And that's when we say eating and drinking, it breaks the fast. It therefore doesn't matter whether what you eat is halal or haram. Whether it's beneficial or harmful. Whether it is much or little. That some scholars say, even if a person puts a mustard seed into his mouth, as small as it is, it breaks his fast. But in the modern day we're in nowadays with blood copping, people don't know to suck with it. So the one that does the blood copping, it doesn't break his fast if he uses this methodology. As for the one that the blood copping is done to, due to the excessive blood that's taken out of him, the excessive blood, it breaks his fast. So what number are we on now? Six. Number seven. 
from the things that break the fast is what? Huh? Number seven is intentionally vomiting. Intentionally vomiting. If a person vomits and the vomit, he overcomes them and they didn't do it on purpose, is involuntary, the vomit does not break the fast. But a person intentionally vomiting, he breaks the fast. Jayyid. So we have three, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran. Eating, drinking, and intercourse. And intercourse is the most severe. Because there's kafara, there's expiation. For the one who has intercourse in the day hours of Ramadan, the kafara, the expiation is what? To free a slave. Oh, siyam shahrain mutatabi'in. If you can't free a slave, he has to fast two months consecutively. So if he fasts for 10 days, and on the 11th day, he misses it, what does he have to do? Start all over again. And if he could not fast two months consecutively, sitina miskina. He has to feed 60 miskin. The fourth, as we mentioned, is what? Injection. And the fifth, menstrual cycle or postnatal bleeding. The sixth, copying. Seventh, and the eighth, in Zalun Mani, for semen to come out of a man with desire. If he came out without desire, he doesn't break the fast. But if he comes out with desire, this also, he breaks the fast. So a psalm, this is it, according to Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what is the proof, what is the delil of mashru'iyya, of the legislation of fasting? The proof first and foremost of the Qur'an is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as siyam O you believe kutiba alaykum as siyam Fasting, kutiba, has been prescribed. Bima'na furida, has been obligated upon you. Kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum. In the same way it was prescribed for those who came before you. La'allakum tattaqoon. In order for you to attain taqwa. So therefore, the purpose behind fasting, or the sole reason behind a psalm, is it for us during Ramadan to get a feeling behind how people that have less to eat and less to drink feel, so we could go what they, through what they're going through? Is it for the detoxification of the body? Is it for weight loss? Is it for health reason? Is this the reason behind fasting? La. The reason behind fasting, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, la'allakum tattaqoon. The reason behind fasting is taqwa. These are hikmah, wisdoms behind fasting. But the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is obligated to fast upon us is for us to attain a taqwa, piety, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So fasting is not only a physical affair, it's a spiritual affair. That a person who fasts and he doesn't attain the spirituality of increasing in taqwa, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is past, is fasting, is deficient. Which is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, رُبَّ الصَّائِمْ حَظُّهُ مِنَ الصِّيَامِ الْجُوعُ وَالْعَطَشِ Maybe the one that fasts, the only portion or reward or anything gets from his fasting is hunger and thirst. May Allah ta'ala not make us of those. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلُ بِي Whoever does not leave off false statements and actions of statements, Allah is not in need of him to leave his food and his drink. And part of false statements or evil statements is lying, backbiting and namima. And from the actions of falsehood and ignorance from the greatest of it is the abandonment of salah. You find some people, they're fasting and they do not pray. Even though some of the scholars are of the opinion that the one that doesn't pray abandons salah is not a Muslim. Or the one that denies the obligation of salah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kutiba alaykum as siyam is prescribed salah or afan, siyam upon you fasting. Also says, Inna salah كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مقوتا that salah is prescribed from the believers at a set time so not only abandoning the salah not praying on time 
not praying in jama'ah for the men, not praying in congregation, when you have the ability to do so, this is from actions of falsehood. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated and legislated as siyam the reason behind it, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So this is a proof of, I have the legislation of fasting. From the sunnah, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, بُنِيَ الْإِسْلَامَ عَلَى خَمْسِ Islam is built upon five. شَهَادَةُ أَنْ لَا إِلَيْنَ اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَى وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاءِ وَصَوْمُ الرَّمَضَانِ And the fast of Ramadan, the fourth pillar. And the last proof is ijma' consensus of the scholars, that psalm is an obligation. It's so much an obligation, some of the ulama, they say the one that leaves us fasting with the ability to do so, kharaja min al-millah, has left Islam. Other scholars say no, he's committed a major sin. He only leaves Islam if he denies the obligation. There's ijma', a consensus, that fasting is an obligation with these five conditions, which is attached to the ahkam of siyam. And what are these five conditions? They say, a soul wajibun ala kulli muslim. Fasting is obligatory. I see you're taking notes, mashallah ta'ala, ya mus'ab. Mental notes, yeah? Fasting, five. You're going to remember them, inshallah. Number one, muslim, upon a muslim. And the opposite of muslim is what? Kafir. Jayyid? So the kafir, fasting, we cannot impose fasting upon him, obligate him to fast. But is it obligatory upon him to fast? Naam, it's obligatory upon him to fast. Because what we address with as Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they address the mukhatabun bihi kadal. They also address with it the obligation of salah and zakah, although they will not be rewarded. Even salah, they will not reward for their salah, but they are also addressed with it. And that's why when they enter the hellfire, they ask, Ma salakakum fi saqar. What made you enter the blazing fire? What would they say? Lam nakum in We have not of those who prayed. But they're not rewarded. So for the fasting to be accepted, al Islam. Secondly, aqil. He has to have sound mind and intellect. And the opposite of sound mind and intellect is what? Insanity or anything associated with loss of mind. For example, someone reaches an extreme old age that they're not in full control of their faculty. Or some other mental disability. They don't have to, they should, they don't have to fast. They should not fast. It's not accepted. Because fasting is an act of ibadah. It is a what? A niyyah. An intention. Baligh. He has to have reached the age of what? Maturity. This is in terms of obligation, not in terms of acceptance. Baligh, in terms of obligation. But in terms of acceptance, if a young person fasts and he's not reached the age of, is, of maturity, he's still accepted. So long as he has some years, he could differentiate between things. In fact, the ulama say the one that has authority, such as the father in the household, he should order the children to fast. Like the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they used to order the children to fast. So long as he doesn't harm them, and it's not too difficult, the children used to fast. And when they became hungry, they gave them something to play with, a toy to play with. And this is a very important note here, two important notes here. Number one, the children, our children, we should encourage them to fast to get used to fasting. And what many mothers do out of mercy for the children, true mercy for the children is tarbiyah al-Islamiyah, to bring them up Islamically and cultivate them Islamically. True rahmah for your children is that the Prophet said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ul in ra'iyyatihi. Each one of you is a shepherd and each one of you is responsible for your flock, is to guide them. This is true rahmah for your children, to encourage them, even if they're children too fast. You should order them all to fast. The other important note is mentioned age of maturity. Maturity is determined by three things. Number one, if he reaches the age of 15, or, not with, but or, pubic hair, or, ikhrajul mani, yani, uh, the water or the liquid that comes out due to sexual desires. And for the women, a fourth one, which is what? Hayyub, menstrual cycle. So if a girl, she reaches the age of 12, age of 11, if she starts to have menstrual cycle, she has to fast. There's no difference between her and a 30-year-old woman. 
We can't say she's still a little girl. She's considered under the Sharia ah as a what? Matured. The fourth condition, Qadir, ability. And the opposite of ability is what? Al Ajz, inability. And the ability are two types. There's inability, which is a permanent condition or irreversible condition. An example of a permanent irre irreversible condition is a person not fasting due to old age. He's unable to, he's extremely old and frail. This is not reversible. He's not going to get younger. He's only going to get older. For such a person, fidya. The feed a poor person for every day of the month. Or some permanent condition. Somebody's got a terminal illness, like cancer, for example. They're going to pass away. This is, as far as we know, what doctors tell us. If it's something which is not going to be healed, they feed a poor person every day. And there's inability, which is temporary, like a cold or flu, or women that are pregnant, or women that are what? Breastfeeding. Their situation is like the situation of who? The ill. فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ to make it up a later date. Although there's a very minority opinion, a rare opinion, that says the pregnant women and the breastfeeding women, what should they do? Feed a poor person every day. But this opinion is very, 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 very rare. It's a minority opinion and it goes against a sahih hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he mentioned the musafir, the pregnant, and the breastfeeding all in one category, that they have to make it up at a later date. And this is the opinion of the Jamhur, the majority of the scholars, that she has to make it up. And the fifth condition is what? Al Iqama, to be a resident, not a traveller. So we've mentioned those things that break the fast. These things that break the fast, they will never break your fast except with three conditions. I want you to also remember these three conditions. You know the Mufattirat, the Maniyah, the thing that break your fast. For it to break your fast, there's three conditions. In knowledge. Knowledge of time or knowledge of the ruling. So for example, knowledge of time. It looks dark, like it's Maghrib, for example. And you think it's time for Maghrib, and you break your fast. Out of ignorance of the time, and then the sun suddenly comes up again. Is your fast broken? No, because you was what? Ignorant of the time or knowledge, or ignorance of the hukum, the ruling. Like the Sahabi radiallahu an, concerned the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, until the thread of dawn becomes distinct from the thread of night, he took the ayah, literally. So he kept eating, and he had two threads in front of him, a black thread and a white thread, and he kept eating and looking at it, till he could see the difference between the black and the white, and he kept eating, eating, until after Fajr. But he didn't have to make up the fast, why? Ignorance of the ruling. Secondly, a dhikr, you have to remember for it to break your fast. And the opposite of dhikr is what? Nisyan. So if you eat mistakenly, out of forgetfulness, you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَا تُآخِذْنَا إِنْ نَسِينَا Do not cease for that, we forget. It doesn't break your fast. And lastly, al irada, willfulness. You willfully broke your fast. So if somebody forces you to drink water, or forces you to drink, it doesn't break your, your fast. So these are three conditions attached to these mufattirat al thalatha so we covered a song, his definition, the proof of his legislation, the proof or the conditions of those who is obligatory upon. This is a song. The next thing connected to Ramadan, the fiqh of Ramadan, is Al Laylatul Qadr. Something which we all should yearn for in these last 10 days. Something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored his ummah with. There's no ayah or surah in the Quran that speaks on the same topic from the beginning to the end except for what surah? Surah Al-Qadr. You find in every surah, the topics are one or two. But surah Al-Qadr, from the beginning to the end, is speaking about what? Laylatul Qadr. Inna anzannahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Wa ma adraka ma Laylatul Qadr. What will convey to you what Laylatul Qadr is? Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alf shahr. Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months, which is equal to 83 years. Not equal to, in fact, better than 83 years. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alf shahr. And from the blessings of this Laylatul Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
تنزل الملائكة. during this ليلة القدر تنزل الملائكة. not تنزل but تنزل. تنزل means the angels will descend. تنزل يدل على الاستمرار. the angels will continue to descend. To the point is a hadith of Sahih that in عدد الملائكة the numbers of angels on the face of the earth on ليلة القدر أكثر من عدد الحصى في الأرض are more than the numbers of pebbles on the face of the earth. That the angels won't just descend; they continue to descend and descend and descend. والروح سبحان الله. And even Jibreel alayhi salam descends on that night of Laylatul Qadr. And from the fiqh of Ramadan of Laylatul Qadr for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam to seek it out, because you don't know if it's on the 21st, on the 23rd, on the 27th, although there's narrations that mention the 27th, that narration of Ubay ibn Ka'ab, who used to say, Wallahi, Laylatul Qadr, Layla 27. He used to swear by Allah that Laylatul Qadr is on the 27th night. However, we know it's in the last 10 days. And from the actions of the Prophet ﷺ, in the last 10 days is what? Al-i'tikaf. Aisha radiallahu anha said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يعتكف في عشر الأواخر من رمضان وعتكف أزواجه من بعده. Every single Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ would do i'tikaf in the last 10 days. Seeking at what? Laylat al-Qadr. So what remains of this last 10 days, if you can, I know in this match you have i'tikaf, try to do i'tikaf. And what is al-i'tikaf? Al-i'tikaf, lughatan, al-luzum, al-mulazam, wal-lubth, wal-mukth, is to confine yourself to something, or to devote yourself to something, which is why Ibrahim, alayhi salatu salam, he said to his people, مَا هَذِهِ التَّمَاثِيلِ أَلَّتِ أَرَاكُمْ لَهَا عَاكِفُونَ What are these idols or pictures? I see you doing what? I'tikaf, devotion to to be devoted or confine yourself. I'tikaf. I'tikaf, according to Sharia, is muqam fil masjid, to confine yourself to the masjid. Devote yourself to the masjid. From a specific individual with the intention of a ta'abud in a specific place, meaning the masjid, and during a specific time. The last 10 days. Although there's no minimum requirement for i'tikaf of days, but if you want to do it according to the Sunnah, the last 10 days, you should be in the masjid before the 21st night, before Maghrib of the 21st, for 10 days. But even if you do one hour, two hours, all this i'tikaf, to seek out Laylatul Qadr, to seek out these last 10 days. Because these last 10 days are times of action that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in these last 10 days, shadda mi'zarahu, would tighten his lower garment for ijtihad, actions in ibadah, of staying from his wife, as it was in i'tikaf. He'll stay up the whole night. Wake up his own family. Whether they're praying or not praying, meaning the women, you should wake up everybody, children, the last 10 days of, the, of these last 10 days, seeking Laylatul Qadr. And the last issue contact, connected to Ramadan, the fiqh Ramadan, which we we'll touch on briefly, inshallah, is Tarawih. At Tarawih is the night prayer. The Prophet وسلم, said, Salatul Layl, the night prayer, is what? Two raka'ah, two raka'ah. Meaning there's no specific numbers. Okay? But that which the Prophet sallallahu prayed all in total was how many? Eight. With witr, eleven. And that is better. However, if you pray two, four, in some masjid they pray twenty-three, it's all fine. But for you to get the reward of tarawih, the Prophet sallallahu says, man qama ma'a imamihi, Whoever stands with Imam, Hatta Yon Sarif, until he leaves, he gets the reward of praying the whole night. So, where did they pray 23? Where did they pray 8? And remember, Imam is your Imam. And the Imam, the purpose of the Imam is to be what? To be followed. So, where did they pray 8? 23, for the sake of unity of the Ummah and behind, behind the Imam, she pray 23. Uthman radiallahu an in Mina, even though the Prophet he prayed two rak'ah in Mina. Qasran, Atamma, he prayed four. Abu Bakr prayed how many? Two. Umar prayed how many? Two. So for eight years, they were praying two, two, two. And the Sahaba believe it should only be how many in Mina? Two. Uthman, when he prayed eight, uh, four, one of the Sahaba, I think Abdullah bin Abbas, you know what he said? 
He said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. As though it's a calamity. But did he pray for behind Uthman? He still prayed for behind Uthman. So what we see nowadays, when people go for tarawih, they say, you know what? I'm doing the sunnah. I'm going to pray eight raka'ah, I'm going to bounce. I'm following the sunnah. La. You shouldn't do that. You don't get the reward for the whole night. Or what some other people say, you say, you know what? They've got a different imam after eight. I've prayed with that imam. He's gone, I go. Hatta yon sorry for the imam. But the ibrah is in the salah. Because the imam is only an appointee for the other imam. Because the end of the salah is signified by what? The qiyam, by what? The witr. So whether it's three imams, four imams, okay, pray two, I left with the imam, you pray two, I've left with him. No. You stay all the way till the end. Whether they pray 23, 40, whatever, to get the reward of Salah at Taraweeh, insha'Allah. And on the note of Salah at Taraweeh, what we mentioned previously as well, the most important Salah to be upon, insha'Allah ta'ala, is what? Your five daily prayers. Do not mess around with those. That you're walking to the masjid in the heat of Dhuhr is better for you than the tears that come out of your eyes in Taraweeh because that's an obligation. So these are some of the rules and regulations connected to Ramadan. Like I said in the very beginning, it's very difficult to convert all the fiqh of Ramadan, but I hope what we covered so far, it serves as a basis for us, inshallah. So now, if there's any question, we'll entertain some questions, inshallah, then we ask questions for ourselves for the quizzes, inshallah.